Good morning. It's good to see you all here today together to worship with us. Um, for those who don't know, Jody is, I'm afraid, off sick at the moment, but we're blessed in that Emma has joined us today, Emma Webber, and Emma is the curate at St John's Pinner. So it's great that she's able to join us and lead us today. Um, I don't think there's a lot of notices I need to amplify today. There'll be the usual things going on which are in the notice sheet which is available on the way out. Robert has got a notice so I'll let him do that. Just remind you that the fellowship group meets every two weeks on a Tuesday evening at 7.30 at Joan Pace's. Uh, the next one is this Tuesday. We're not sure if there's going to be a Lent course but the themes for the fellowship group for the next five or six weeks are the way of the cross. Jesus washing Peter's feet, the new commandment, Gethsemane, violence, denial, crucifixion, and then new life in Christ. So if, if uh, you wish to join us for uh, the fellowship group on Tuesday evenings, please do come along 7.30 to 9 at Joan Pace's. Hello, I've got a notice about the prayer meeting. We will have a prayer meeting next week and uh, I will be leading with Pam's very able assistance. The theme will be the journey uh, and we'll, if you have ever wondered what a prayer station that is a tent or a river looks like, well, you'll just have to turn up and, and see what it looks like. So we hope to see as many of you there as possible uh, next week, Saturday at 11 o'clock. Thank you, Alice. Uh, as Jodie's off sick, I've got a card for her. That's to be at the back, near the teas and coffees. Please sign it before you leave to show our love to Jodie. And Quinton will be taking that home later on. The only other thing to say is that uh, Justin, who isn't here this morning, is preparing the next magazine. And he's asked me to remind people about that. And there's a notice at the back if you want to do something about that on his email address. So thank you. I'll hand over to... Thank you for the honour of letting me come and worship with you this morning. Please do bear with me as I attempt to follow the excellent guidance of Sarah, Mary and the team with all their notes. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise forever. Let us first, let us stand as we sing our first song, Christ Be Our Light.
we prepare our hearts as we say together, God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Please sit or kneel as you feel comfortable. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation, and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand if you feel able as we join together in singing the Gloria. for our first reading. The first reading today is Psalms 27. This can be found on page 557 in the Church Bible. Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I've asked from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above my enemies who surround me. At a sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shout of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says, seek of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in hunger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. 
Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not hand me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you feel able for the gospel. Gospel reading today comes from Matthew 4, verses 12 to 23, which can be found on page 968 of the Church Bibles. When Jesus heard that John had been in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which is by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah, land of Zebulun and the land of Nephiti, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of all the, of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for, the pe for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee preparing their nets. Jesus called them and immediately they left their boat and their father and they followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and illness amongst the people. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. Let us pray. Lord, bless this time, please. Let us know your presence among us. And as we delve into a corner of your scripture, whatever the words that exit my lips, let it be your message we hear and not my own. In Jesus' name, amen. As we're still in the period of Epiphany, my thoughts linger on those wise men with their gold, frankincense and myrrh. These gifts that speak into the person who Jesus was and the person he was to become. Presence from humanity to our Saviour God. A gift of love inspired though of limited knowledge from the people who are giving the gift. How much more does God know us, each and every one of us here? And knowing God knows and loves us, we really should pay attention to the gifts he gives us in turn. Far better than socks or computer games, one of the first gifts God gave us can be found in the second chapter of the whole Bible. We were given a Sabbath day, a time of rest and relaxation, a time to connect with God and be, a time to retreat, withdraw, a chance to be rested, before facing that which was to come. This may seem at odds with the teachings of society, where we are at work, where we, we're to work, we're to achieve, to win the prize, be it money and status, power or influence. And yet this isn't how we have been made, for which it's good to listen to the notes of our maker. I must admit, I don't always read the manufacturer's guidance. Sometimes it may be because I'm kind of familiar with how to turn a kettle on. Or in the case of when we moved into our flat in Pinner, we just had to work out how the washing machine worked through a little bit of trial and a little bit of error. But when it comes to something as important as ourselves, 
as each other. It's time to pay attention to the guidance. You may be wondering what I'm talking about and how this relates to the calling of those four disciples, as was read so well to us a moment ago. When I begin to work on my preaches, I tend to read the passages a few times, and then I pray a bit, then I read them again, then I pray, then I read. You're getting the picture. But each time I read them, it was the same phrase that called out to me. It was verse 12. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. Now I'm hoping this isn't God just tapping me on the shoulder, letting me know I need to do better at prioritizing my times of rest. And if that's the case, I apologize. But it's always good to hear how God does care for each and every one of us. So back to the verse. Jesus withdrew to a place of safety, of rest. Withdrawing from a confrontation can be the wise move, a sign of both wisdom and strength. There was no one Jesus couldn't stand up to, no one he couldn't beat. And yet he withdrew, he regrouped. And in doing so, he not only fulfilled a prophecy whilst living beside the sea, but a new phase of his ministry was born, whilst modelling for us a way of living as God intended. The Bible tells us the Sabbath is made for us, that we weren't made for the Sabbath. Yes, we're to care for humanity, to give what we can, our service, our time, our money, our food, ourselves. We should follow Jesus and try to hold that which is precious in his eyes, to be precious in ours also. We look after creation, we are to care for our fellow humans, whether halfway around the world or in our own neighbourhoods. We are to look out for the stranger and love them as Jesus does. But we should also try to look after the strangest of all, ourselves. By resting on the Sabbath, whether that be on a Sunday or should we need to move it to another day, but working out of a place of rest, feeding ourselves with knowledge, scripture, worship, and by serving others, creating a sort of virtuous circle. Think about it. How can we effectively help others if we're running on empty? Jesus loves us too. We should take care. So after we've rested, where might God lead us if we listen and follow his call? I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. But you may be surprised at the doors he opens for you. It takes bravery to follow Jesus, as Peter, Andrew, James and John show us in this reading. They leave everything to follow this Jesus into an uncertain future. They leave behind friends and family, nearly everyone they know other than their brother. They leave their homes and they leave their boats and their nets. Their very means of survival, the food on their plates and their means to get more. And the money they've invested in them at a time without a state safety net, even one as tattered as that which we have in the UK today. They must have seen something incredibly special in this person they met to drop everything. And yet, consider the incredible journey all four of them would make, preparing the way for us all to be here this morning, spreading the word of love, facing both kindness and hostility as the gospel traveled, with Peter himself being the very rock on whom Jesus built his church. You may be happy to hear, we aren't all called to give up absolutely everything we know. Our leap of faith may look different. I certainly question whether I could be as brave as Peter, Andrew, James and John. And yet, we are all called to follow. Though, as was read from the Psalms, the Lord is my strength and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. There is no safer place to put ourselves than into the hands of God, to follow him through our lives, to let God guide our path. So by putting our faith in him, by letting him lead, we open up the doors to incredible opportunities, incredible adventures. So rest and trust. In this though, I am not promising an easy life, as the lives of the four brothers showed. The opposition they faced as they followed Jesus' path. For sometimes out of that rest, we are called to stand. Something that our brothers and sisters in this country and around the world can be oh so familiar with today. You may or may not be aware, we are halfway through the week of prayer for Christian unity for 2023. To be honest, if it wasn't in the church bulletin last week, I wouldn't have had a clue. But this is our chance. This is a chance to stand with our brothers and sisters in this country and again around the world, whether facing prejudice for who they are or living lives of faith where conversion to Christianity is plain illegal. We are one body. We are one church. Some of our theology and worship styles may differ, but we all look to Jesus. Throughout this week and beyond, please think and pray. Pray that our fellow Christians are able to find rest and peace, a place to retreat at times of need, and the wisdom, strength and courage to stand and be counted when it is right so to do. But also, please pray, please pray for us. Pray that our eyes may be open to the prejudice and suffering around us and that we too may be gifted some of that courage to stand up and support one another and the understanding to know how best we can help following Jesus' lead. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the amazing gifts you bless us with, how you care for and love each one of us, how you want what is best for us. Please bless us with the courage to take the leap and follow you through our rest, service and prayer play. Also, Open our eyes this week to show us how and where we can make a difference, supporting each other in love. And please, gift us more courage so to do, for as the Lord is our light and our salvation, whom shall we fear? In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Let us affirm our faith through the words of the Creed. Please be standing. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we are led in our prayers. Shall we pray? When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Dear Father, we thank you that we can gather today to praise and worship you. We thank you for your message today that Emma brought to us. We thank you for our friends here and the encouragement they give to us. We thank you for your amazing love for each of us that we have been thinking about in particular over this time in Epiphany. For your teaching, and that we can know you personally, and that you live in us. We thank you, Lord, for our lives today, that we can be physically and spiritually refreshed. We thank you for your patience and grace towards each of us, in particular as times are hard for some of us. We thank you for being there beside us in the good times and the bad, whether we recognise it or not. We pray that you will continue to work within each of us, continually changing us into the people that you want us to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that our church will continue to grow into the witness that you want us to be in this area in Harrow. Witnesses that strengthen the presence of Christ in our community. We pray that we will continue to be a welcoming body of Christ here at St Michael's, so that when people think about us, they will think about your church, the people who worship here. We pray that you will continue to bless our fellowship and bring new people in to join us. We lift you before you, our leaders. Jody, we pray that you will bring healing upon her. For our pastoral workers, Sandra, Jeff, John and Joan, those on the PCC, those on the church warden team, and for those who lead music, and for our Sarah administrator, and all those involved in the various groups that meet here. And pray in particular for those organising services at this time, pray that uh, they will run smoothly, and that uh, things will run efficiently, and we'll be able to praise you and relax in you. We pray for the other groups, the chair-based exercise, See, on Tuesday, they'll provide opportunities of fellowship and friendship for all who come. And the English conversation class, that will be a way to meet new people and bring them into this building. For the warm space, we pray that you'll bring some people along, the right people that you want to meet with us. And we pray for the midweek fellowship group, we pray that it will be a real time of blessing for those who meet together to discuss your word. And we pray for the wider church in Harrow and Willesden, I um, also want to praise you for, thank you for the, the work going on in our schools for Regen. and pray that you will bless that team as they work to, to bring your word and knowledge about you to young people in this area. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We see the beauty of your creation, the su lovely sunshine today, and it reminds us of you. We praise you and worship you for all that you've given to us. We thank you for your people throughout the world in different cultures and environments. And we pray that for those who are suffering poverty, persecution, slavery, oppression, injustice, and the effects of conflict, we ask that you will bring compassion, wisdom, and courage to your children throughout the world, and that they will be able to defend those who suffer and to work to bring relief wherever we can. We pray for those suffering in our community from ill health, financial pressures, and loneliness. And we pray that you would work within the government to bring compassion and empathy that they will be able to help people. But if before you those in our area, uh, in other areas of the world where there is conflict, and of course in particular Ukraine, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In these days of uncertainty and fear, we pray that each of us might again turn to you and receive your gift of peace, that we work for justice, no reconciliation and love, and choose paths 
not of hatred or destruction, violence or retribution, but instead that you will be your way of justice, mercy and peace. We thank you for the food bank you know, that works within this local area, and we thank you for able to support that. And also for the night shelters, they seek to look after homeless people within this borough of Harrow. We remember those who have lost loved ones at this time, and pray that you'll bring compassion to them. We lift before you Jody, Carol, Innes, Alison, Natalie and Robert. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence now, let's bring before God those who we in particular are praying for at this time, those who need healing and comfort, those in mourning, those finding life hard at this current time. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. we haven't sung for two or three years but it is entirely appropriate it tells of the four disciples that were called Peter, Andrew, James and John and it tells of our response also as Jesus calls us June is Scarborough Fair The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is in 
indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. To you, Lord, Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks, because in the incarnation of the word, a new light has dawned upon the world, that all nations may be brought out of darkness to see the radiance of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine, may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. To you be praying and praise In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make for the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Except through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. To you be praise and praise forever. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that light, life, is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread always. or both kinds. Either way, you'll be receiving full communion with the body of Christ. As you approach, should you require gluten-free, please do let me know.
shall move and live and grow in you and you in me. whose Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, for he is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. God, our Father, whose word has come among us in the Holy Child of Bethlehem, May the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, Glory, thanks, and praise to God. As we turn to our final song of worship, our carol, Hark the Herald.
virgin's womb, bearing flesh the God. 